college education has long been accepted as a path to career opportunity and success, but many people can't imagine a college degree in their future. Educational attainment has historically been a challenge for our region, so what can be done to increase the number of college graduates in our area? I'm Chuck Cantrell and this is Metro Campus, the UTC Report. Today we're going to explore what UTC is doing to extend the dream of a college degree to everyone and how that benefits our entire community. So come back from Metro Campus, the UTC Report. Hi and welcome back to Metro Campus, the UTC Report. I'm Chuck Cantrell. As a community-engaged campus, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga sponsors a number of programs to bring the opportunities of higher education to a variety of students. For 35 years, one of those programs has been the Center for Community Career Education. From displaced homemakers who are entering the workforce for the first time to elementary school students who are just starting to think about what it takes to make it in today's marketplace, the Center has offered a wide range of programs. My guests today are very familiar with the Center and its very successful programs. Sandy Cole is Director of the UTC Center for Community Career Education, and Belinda Brownlee is Director of Upward Bound, one of the programs operated by the Center. Sandy and Belinda, both of you, thank you so much and welcome to Metro Campus. Sandy, you're, you're an old pro, you've yeah, been here many been times. Here a few times. So tell us a little bit about, uh, let's sort of start off with a big umbrella look. What is the Center for Community Career Education and how did it get started 35 years ago? Well, I guess it started with a very small grant from the state of Tennessee and it has grown now to about a $2 million a year operation. Um, but we basically focus mainly now on college access and so we work with elementary, middle, high school students, UTC students and adults, uh, about 3,000 a year uh, and help them go through the process of thinking about college. So what, tell me a little bit about the philosophy of the center because you know it's not, you say you, you work with elementary school students, clearly not UTC students yet. Mm -hmm. why, why is UTC involved in something like this that, that reaches into such an early age? Because kids this age can, can envision a life in college and they, it's made easier for elementary kids anyway because UTC students are mentoring them so they get to ask the, our students what it's like to be a college student. But so I, I guess I'm still trying to um, Tell me about what the whole purpose of the center oh, the, is. Our mission. Yeah. yeah uh, there you go, the, the, a mission. That's a word I should have known. <laughs> yeah, basically our mission is to help is help the, the clientele we serve reach their potential. And so when you started this 35 years ago, it was kind of an unusual idea because mm -hmm. a lot of campuses weren't mm -hmm. doing it. How did y'all come up with the idea? Cause I don't know if you were, were you in the beginning? Nope, I nope. was not. Okay, I was going to say, but you're pretty close. <laughs> well, Gail Shulman started the, the center in 1980 and I came in 1993, so she had a, a number of years head start on, on my, my tenure there. But so how did the idea of just bringing this to a college campus come to be? Uh, why do you think it's important? Why, why was UTC interested oh, in, in oh, pursuing okay. this type of program that wasn't exactly. part of, of a typical college, uh, you know, uh, campus? Yeah, well, it helps, per, I think, uh, fulfill the public service mission of an institution. And, and we have a population in the region, not just Ch Hamilton County, but in the region that w it, with the opportunity to go to college or some post-secondary oppor uh, training opportunity, whether it's apprenticeship programs or Chattanooga State or certificate programs, they're going to enhance their opportunities for employment and improve the quality of life for them and their families. So I know that one of the very first programs was, I think it was called Career Beginnings. No, Career Beginnings worked with students mm -hmm. with high schools. What FACE, was, FACE was the first program. What, is, is that the one that worked with, with uh, uh, homemakers? Uh -huh, yeah. So how did that, I mean, that's an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. I mean, who thought of that? And, yeah. and who would have thought that that was a population that wasn't being served? Well, what was happening in the early 80s or the late 70s, it, it, the, the divorce rate started going up. And typically when you see a trend like that nationally, the federal government gets interested in it and wants to do something because a lot of the women were, were entering the workforce after having worked in the home and were not able to be the, the breadwinner. They weren't able to transfer the skills from the home to the workplace. So that, the FACE program start, started, which later led to life planning, which helped them transfer those skills and learn what kind of training options were available to them so they could take care of their children. Well, I remember Gail was even telling me things like, you know, a, a woman who worked in the home, she knew accounting and yeah, bookkeeping, absolutely. but she didn't know that that's what it was. It's she was just living with a budget. Yeah, absolutely. It's just and so there skills were, transfer. Exactly, skills that were transferred. Mm -hmm. So tell me now, uh, I know that uh, you are very active in partnering with the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and, and other groups around mm -hmm. the community. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what you do with the Chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, so. 
I know that there's there's several groups that do with young people, mm -hmm. um, and I can't even remember all of them. So you probably can name them better than I can. But let's start with Career Crunch. What yeah. is Career Crunch? Career, career Crunch is an eighth grade career day. So Hamlin County Schools eighth graders are bused to we've been using the Armory National Guard Armory, and employers from around the region set up booths, and the kids get to come and ask them questions about how much education it take to do what you do, how much do you get paid, it's just kind of exploring careers. Okay. And then moving to ninth grade with reality check, uh, it's just an opportunity for them to see what it's like to be an adult and you know have to pay bills and all that sort of thing. I have to tell you, I love the whole concept of reality yeah. check because I've actually worked with it yeah. with you guys before and this, they'll come around and they want to buy that <laughs> brand new TV and they only have $500 <laughs> and the rent's due and the <laughs> exactly. electricity is due and water's <laughs> due and there's no food on the table and wow. You know. Yeah, it's, it's named very well and a lot of the, pro, uh, the students in the programs at the center um, has participate in these programs, but 10th grade it's how to get a job because they're turning 16, 11th grade is how to be a millionaire, trying to manage money, credit, and that sort of thing, and then of course the 12th grade is the um, college and career day. Can I take that one about how to be a millionaire? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I probably need to. Absolutely. <laughs> My wife would certainly say I could use, I could benefit from that one. So, so why is why is UTC involved in working with these young people in some, I mean, to teach them how to balance a checkbook? What's that got to do with going to college? Well, for, for us in the center, again, it's the population that we're serving in, in some respect, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So staff and students that work with us in our programs are invited to participate as volunteers in these activities. And it's, it's just, I mean, we know how important these activities are for kids to be able to help sort through all the decisions they have to make before they make a decision about going to college. And having a little bit more exposure along the way helps them get to that, at least gives them some, some um, some options that they can choose from. Right, and perspective about what, oh, what's, a, what's available absolutely. to them and what it's going to take to be successful, absolutely. which I know is very much about what your program is, is about. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to talk about Upward Bound, how long it's been around and how it serves UTC students. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation about the Center for Community Career Education and the Upward Bound program at UTC. Welcome back to Metro Campus, the UTC Report. I'm Chuck Cantrell. We're discussing the Center for Community Career Education and the Upward Bound Program at UTC. My guests are Sandy Cole and Belinda Brownlee. Belinda, I want to ask you now a little bit about um, Upward Bound. What is Upward Bound? Let's start with that. Upward Bound is a federally funded TRIO program. We are a pre-collegiate program. We help 9th through 12th graders improve their academics and get into college. And so wh who are your students? Where do you get your students? Our target schools are Howard, Brainerd, East Ridge, and Red Bank. Uh, with this grant, we can serve any first generation, low income, or student that's at risk of academic failure at any school within the Hamilton County School District. So do, do they come to your, do they come to UTC campus or do you go to them or how does it work? Well, um, our program serves our students. We provide tutoring and we have Saturday academics. So they meet 18 Saturdays on the UTC campus. And then during the summer, they live on UTC campus for six weeks. Oh, wow. And during that time, what do they do for six weeks? Oh gosh. Uh, we have classes during the day and in the evenings. We do social, cultural enrichment, college tours. We, of course, you have to have fun things for them. So we do fun things for them, activities on, in the dorms and things like that. If you don't find fun things for them, they'll find them for themselves. You're absolutely <laughs> correct. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand <laughs> that. So uh, when you, you mentioned the Upper Ground is a TRIO program. For, mm -hmm. for viewers who may not know, what exactly does that mean? Well, um, in 1964, Upward Bound was the first federally funded program. There were 18 pilot programs, and then after that, uh, President Johnson signed the Higher Education Act in 1965, and there were three other programs added to actually student support services and talent search. Upward Bound serves ninth through 12th graders. Talent Search serves middle school students as well as high school. And then Student Support Services serves students on the college campus that they're funded on. And so those were the original. Now, after that, there are about eight 
trio programs. The name actually came because they were three programs originally. So um, I know that UTC's Upward Bound program is coming up on an anniversary. Yeah. Uh, it's, if it, when did you say it started? 1968 on campus. And, but the program started in 64. 64. So we were really one of the first still. Yes, we were. So we we're coming up on 50 years. Wow. That's yeah. great. So tell me a little bit about maybe some of your success stories. Ooh. Um, of course, you know, uh, last year, Upward Bound basically celebrated its 50th year in existence. And so I began going through some of the things because, you know, I've been here since 2010 began going through some of the archives and found that uh, the original grant was written by uh, William Butterfield. And um, incid I kind of accidentally ran upon one of his original students who was Judge Walter Williams. Wow. And so um, I talked to him about it. And then, of course, after Mr. Butterfield left, uh, Mr. Booker T. Scruggs, took over the program as the director, and he served as the director for the program for 36 years. So he had people like Rashad Williams, who's now an assistant principal at Red Bank, uh, Magic, uh, the radio personality, she was in Upward Bound. Um, we have a lot of prominent people in the city that have been through Upward Bound. Well, and wow, really well-known names in charge, too, because mm -hmm. Booker, everybody knows Booker. If they don't know him from, from his education work, they know him from playing the saxophone. <laughs> and so uh, then uh, uh, Dr. Butterfield was well-known as an education professor here at UTC yes, he for many years. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you recruit your students and, and, and who comes and, and participates in your programs. Um, we actually try to rely on the guidance counselors to refer students to us because it's very difficult. We don't want to. We serve 70 stu uh, 72 students uh, within the Hamilton County School District. And so we don't want to go in the schools and disrupt their days. So what we basically do is try to rely on the guidance counselors to refer students to us. Um, and we have an application process. You have to provide certain documentation, especially income, that is very critical um, because we have to make sure that we serve low income students. And that's based on the federal guidelines of poverty levels. And so we, we do that and then we go out in the community and participate in other activities that are going on. We actually do reality check and we talk to the kids there any social activities that are going on, we participate in those. Any kind of activity that we can participate to get exposure to the program, that's exactly what we do. How important is parental involvement? Absolutely important. When you have a parent who is involved and who will allow you to help them, help their student understand the importance of getting an education, our job is so much easier. And when you see them, of course we can't, we don't send every student to college. And that is very disappointing because we understand what life is like without a college education. But you have to understand when you need to back back and when you can just do that extra push. And even with the parent, because parents, I've learned that the inner city schools some of them are more concerned about surviving than they are college. And then so you have to, what I've tried to do is show them, since you want to survive, the best possible way to, for you to ensure that is to go to college. I tell you what, we're going to take a break, when we, but when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about y'all's background and how you got into serving other students. And so, okay. so we have to take a break, but when we come back, we'll conclude our conversation about the Center for Community Career Education and Upward Bound at UTC. Hello, and welcome back to Metro Campus. I'm Chuck Cantrell. We're talking about the Center for Community Career Education and the Upward Bound programs at UTC. Okay, Cindy, I know you guys have a big celebration coming up. Tell us a little bit about what's happening. Yeah, next Friday we'll be really celebrating our 35th anniversary. Have to give us a date, please. October 23rd. October 23rd. In okay. the Roth Reading Room at the UTC Library. And who's invited? Uh, uh, partners, stakeholders, folks that we've worked with over the years. And, and what are you celebrating? Growth, 
um, the successes we've had, um, celebrations um, that our clients moved on to work. We produced a video on how the, the impact of the program, like Upper Bound or one of the other programs, the impact of that program on their lives. So that video will show, will unveil that video Friday. So what's next? What's coming down the pike for the center? I know mm -hmm. you guys kind of live grant to grant. <laughs> Yeah, there's, you know, we're always kind of looking for opportunities. Um, we're, we're exploring some right now. We, we've got a new vice chancellor who's um, stimulating our, our creative side to look at uh, some intellectual property and uh, do some things that are a little different that might be a lot of fun for us to do. So we're producing some of those activities right now. Um, you know, uh, she's interested in bringing more TRIO programs to the campus, so we're exploring that a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's our, our strategic plan is to continue serving the clients that we have, but look for opportunities and trends and, and find ways to make those um, opportunities happen for Chattanooga in the region. So, Belinda, I want to ask you, and I'll come back and ask you mm -hmm. the same questions anyway. I want to start with Belinda. How did you get into the world of student service and helping other students be successful? <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, I was in South Carolina and my youngest daughter uh, had enrolled in college and uh, the Upward Bound program at Tri-County Technical College needed a dorm supervisor. And she called me and asked me if I would apply and I did and fell in love, quit my job and went to work for them. I sure did. So what do you get out of it? Because I can tell you when you're talking about it, I can just see it all over your face. <laughs> you just glow when you're talking about it. You know, um, I was a teenage mom. I was pregnant when I was 16. Graduated from Howard High School in 1973 and was embarrassed. Thought that there was no way that I could accomplish my dreams of a college education because I always wanted to go. And so when I left Chattanooga and went to South Carolina, I put my dreams on the back burner and I went to work in one of the plants. And there was someone in the plant that looked at me and said, you know what, you really don't belong here and you really need to go to school. And I listened to them. And I love learning and I love helping our kids understand that life may present you with obstacles. Life may set you back a little bit, but in the back of my mind, I always keep in mind, when life hands you a lemon, you make some lemonade. And that's exactly what I've tried to do with my own life, with my children's life, and with the kids that I work with. I understand that you're gonna make mistakes, you are, but you learn from that mistake and you move forward. Wow, well, Sandy, don't you wish I'd ask you this well, question she, first? She, she's not going to say this about herself, but she's on the downhill side of finishing her doctorate. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I, I, I want to be the first to get to say Dr. Brownlee. <laughs> Thank um, you. So, Sandy, how about you? How did you get into uh, student services? Well, I started my career in higher education as an admissions officer. So, you know, talking to young people about going to college is something I, I and as a student, that's what I did, uh, helped the university with that. And it, it just as I've moved, I, you know, I went probably about 15 years where I didn't have direct contact with students. And when, my, when I came back to the center and had the opportunity to work with high school kids with, through the Career Beginnings Program, I, this is where I belong, working with kids. And, and so, you know, as, we've, as we have um, put, tried to collect most of the college access programs on campus in the center, it's been fun with all the background experience that everybody brings to this and to see the alums of our programs come back to us and, and to say, Thank you for what you did because I'm able to do this and that. It, you know, I don't know how. That's the biggest reward you can get. Yeah, I tell you what, we're almost out of time, but um, well, I could have you guys on, and we could always talk forever because you've always got great things to say. If you'd like more information at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga's Center for Community Education, go to WTC. I'm sorry, www.utc.edu. I'm used to asking for money on WTC. That's all the time we have now for this installment of Metro Campus. Thanks for watching.